Hey, so this is for Mike at um, Ohio Crankshaft. It's for Britt at Babbitt Bearing Incorporated, and it's for Dawes Waffer at DNR Engineering. Um, and of course, it's for Rebecca and Mac McVid McVitty at the um, Antique Boat Museum in Clayton. Just giving you guys a rotating um, assembly uh, update. If we look right here, you can see that this uh, is the uh, third crankshaft that arrived from Hankel yesterday. We have it out. It looks nice. We've measured it. We know dimensionally what our sizes are. Our rods are um, would have been standard. Would have been two and three quarters, Kevin. Yep. And I think that the uh, mains were three and three inches two fifty. I told um, Mike and Mark at Ohio Crankshaft we're building a Babbitt engine, and so it wouldn't be a uh, a big deal that they could grind until all the journals cleaned up um, nice and uh, nice and around, and we will do a custom. Uh, bearing for the mains and a custom bearing for the rods. This uh, crankshaft art still has its counterweights on it. We've removed 22 pounds exactly off the counterweights, which will allow the stone to go in and grind this. If we look down here, also arriving from Henkel, were the um, master and link connecting rods. And this stuff that came from Henkel, um, was three of the uh, connecting rods were babbitted rods and three of them were inserts. So it doesn't matter, it's the same rod, we can use it. Um, later in the company's history, they switched to inserts. Uh, Kevin actually found the federal mogul number on the insert rods. Of course, these are babbitted rods right here. We took this one apart just to show uh, everybody how it works. By the way, the Park, Ohio guys um, and the uh, Cleveland Crankshaft, you guys built this rod too. So there's a lot of Ohio history in this. Um, if we look, this link bushing right here is moving back and forth, which is an absolute no-no. No big deal. It's an easy fix. You also notice with the link connecting rod, you can see holes. Can you get down in there for the oil holes, Kevin? And you can see the oil holes, which have to be indexed properly. And <coughs> um, that's how the link rod receives its lubrication. And if we look in here, we can see some smearing Brit has taken place on the Babbitt. And we're confident that there needs to be oil holes that are drilled up here for the link. The link part of things is what my buddy Dawes is going to make for us. Dawes, <coughs> this is the, um, it almost looks like a wrist pin, but it's the link pin bushing, which is stationary in this rod and pivots on these axles down here in these bronze bushings. If I was a betting man, I would say that's probably SAE 64 bronze, Society of Engineer Automotive Engineers. 64. Does my guess would be is that we make this piece out of 8620 vacuum degassed aircraft grade steel. And of course, this was a hardened uh, ground bushing. Interestingly enough, what holds this in place is a pin that is on a tapered shiv. So this goes in here like this. And then that shiv goes in, and there's a nut on the back side of it, and this is stationary in the in the um, in the big end of the rod, if you will, at all times on the link rod. So we need to make these pins, replace these bushings, and those would be the two materials I would I would suggest these are at. We'll test this for Rockwell, and uh, we'll send a sample bushing out to a lab in New Hampshire and have it uh, burn tested, so we'll know exactly what the alloy is, unless Mr. Hankel can provide us with um, that. Um, information. Small end bushing, which is actually kind of large, same size as this, believe it or not, but the piston floats on. We're just going to use SAE 660 bearing bronze there, which is a diesel grade bushing material for wrist pin bushing will be just fine. This one here is special in the bottom of it though. This thing pivoting has to deal with some, some loads and lubrication issues and I'm I'm betting that this is SA64. So this is our rod configuration and getting to the Babbitt part for the folks um, that haven't dealt with this kind of rod construction before. The, the, the people at Babbitt Bearing Incorporated have treated us really great throughout the years <coughs> and they have saved us a bunch of times. This is a rod where there's no bronze back lining in here. The hot Babbitt metal is literally poured in and you're looking for a molecular bond on this. So this 
Babbitt material will have to be machined out and it'll have to be poured in new material and away we go. One of the reasons we mentioned the shaft diameters here is so that we can make sure that when we're working together as a team, if the team in Ohio grinds these um, shaft pins down to a certain size, we know that Brit has to leave us material to cut out of this rod so that we can have enough material in here to float this. That won't be a big deal. And the other thing that we'll do is Brit will get you uh, the radiuses and um, I'm convinced that's probably like a 330 seconds or an eighth inch radius in here. So we'll get you the radius information so that when you roll this corner, Brit, um, you leave us some material to cut out of the inside of this, but you give us the proper radius so that when this bumps up against this, we have a gentle transition on the rod. That's that. Here's what one looks like all together. Really pretty cool. Um, and it's amazing how they split on the sides. The reason I brought this rod over here was for the ABM folks. The Babbitt material that we're using, you can see where this is delaminated on this, and you can see a small counter bore in here, Britt, for the radius to roll around. This is the lead material, Babbitt lead-based material back then, it isn't anymore, that'll be taken out of here, and then <clears throat> we'll pour in new number two Babbitt and get a molecular bond between these two surfaces. We won't ever have to worry about this going or taking place again um, unless there was some sort of catastrophic loss of lubrication. So it's a very complex little system right here that's taking place. Extremely heavy duty and robust. When the Babbitt folks <coughs> do our main bearings, um, we'll get back ingots like this and we'll CNC spin them to what they need to be the reason I have these two rods laying here is to put this into perspective. These are some of the motorcycle rods that we work on. This rod right here was prepared by Babbitt Bearing Incorporated. You can see they left us a beautiful radius in there. We're going to machine this diameter larger to float it to a custom pin crankshaft. So if we take a look at this rod right here. This is an example of a rod that is identical in its construction and how the adhesion of the bearing was where it's poured directly into the steel. So that's for the ABM folks to look at. And then this is what a lot of manufacturers did, and this is the same construction, where we'd have a bronze shell with a Babbitt lining, and this is what will be on the main bearing journals of the crankshaft. We'll have a bronze bushing with um, a Babbitt lining. And for the folks at the crankshaft company, if you're machining and cleaning up a thrust surface, don't worry about it, you can kiss it, because when we make our thrust bearings, we make them with an oversized thickness thrust so that we can push this crankshaft where it needs to be and centralize it in the engine. So our main bearing bushings will come back looking like that, and then we'll machine them here for the crankcase, and we'll split them and set them for crushing depth. And when we do this, we always leave an extra thrust flange material so that we can properly position the crankshaft where it needs to be. These are boutique engines. A lot of time goes into them, and then it gives you a real reverence for what folks did back in the day. The other thing that I was going to show you is how we plan on machining the um, big end of the connecting rod so that it floats properly on the um, crank pin. So, if you want to follow me over to our connecting rod boring machine. Kevin's actually been boring some connecting rods today. And we wanted to show you how this would work, folks. I'm just going to set that in there loose like that. Our cutter tip is right here like this. And this is a Van Norman connecting rod boring machine. And obviously this spins with our cutter tip like that. And this entire table with a connecting rod moves towards the cutter. Now you'll notice the large scale that's taking place right here. This rod will be hanging like this and we'll be cutting this surface. So this entire rod is gonna to move to the cutter inside here. And we're gonna cut that bearing material after Britt and his team put it back in there for us for clearance that is less than the width of a piece of paper in there. And that massive rod will be floating on that crankshaft pin over there. But that entire rod's gonna to move to this big quill cutter. We actually have a larger cutter that will come in through here like that. 
and this is relatively easy what will take place here. We'll do that in another video. But that's how we plan to tackle the bottom of the scripts. And we got really great people to work with to get us fixed up to do it. That's it.